Hi, I'm George Pearson, and in this video I'll be showing you my fast technique for getting a nice blurred soft back. Let me show you what that looks like. Just like that. So I'll go from this, and I'll go to this, and I'll do it in a very, very fast way. Now if you like this video, make sure you click that like button, and of course share. Click on the share button as well. Don't forget to subscribe, and if you want to learn a lot more about how to use Photoshop Elements, look for my complete training course, and you'll find a link right down there in the description. Okay, let's get to it. Putting in a shallow depth of field effect like this, there is the original and here's our shallow depth of field, really helps to make your subject stand out and pop out in the foreground. Again, this is an easy technique. I'll show you how to do this right now. Just close this down. And here's the basic image. The first thing you need to do is to take your background and drag it up here to the new layer. Get a new copy or new layer right there. You can leave the background shown. That's just fine. Now we need to blur this top layer to find a nice blur area for our background blur. So I'll go up to Filter, come down to Blur and Gaussian Blur. And I found that in most instances, 10 pixels works out pretty well. It's kind of a nice soft blur back there. Don't worry about blurring the whole picture. That's exactly the way it should be. Choose OK. Now we need to hide the blur down here and show the blur at the top. We'll do that with a layer mask and a gradient. So click on your layer mask button. There it is. Make sure your colors here are black in your foreground, white to the background. If they're not, just click on the little icon right there and hit the reverse button. There you go. And then go up here and grab the gradient tool. Now the way this works, in here, click on our first icon there. This is the foreground to background. That's what you're looking for. Foreground to background color. That's why we had those reset. And they should be black to white. Now, black is going to be hiding anything on this layer. And white's going to be showing anything on this layer. I did the black to the white just because this is kind of my standard effect. You, know, you really want those to have white first, black second. Either click on reverse or just hit that to set it black and white. Just kind of reverse those two or click on that button right there. I normally just use the reverse option. Okay, go to the top of your picture or just above the top of your picture. You're doing a gradient straight down. Now in this case, you want to have more gradient happening right down here. So I'm going to come down about a third of the way. So it's right about where her eyes are in this picture. Hold the shift key and then pull straight down from that point. The shift key gives you a perfectly vertical or straight line. Now what we're seeing is we are seeing the image in behind. Let me just hide that for a second, the background image. That's what we're getting. So we're seeing the whole blurred image up here and it kind of fades out as it goes down. With that background showing, what we're doing is we're then seeing our nice sharp foreground. So far so good, but there are two problems. Obviously her face is blurry and it's blurry over here on the right hand side. We can fix those very easily. Let's just hide this layer just for a second. Come down to our background layer. Grab the lasso tool. I have my set for a feathering of one pixel, that's fine. And then just come in here and do a quick little lasso right around the figure. Just like this, just kind of come out just a little ways outside of the hair. You don't need to go out too far on this one. And you don't have to be absolutely perfect either. Just kind of come just, just around like that. Go around the hand. Straight across the bottom and right back to our beginning point. There's our selection. Click on Refine Edge. And brings up the Refine Edge tool. I'm using the overlay, which gives you this kind of a red overlay in here. Makes it real easy to see what we're doing. The default brush size is 35, and that should be just fine for this. Now just paint in right along the edge and allow Photoshop Elements to come in and find where all those little pieces are. So Elements will be doing the masking for you here. I like using this tool, just doing little short movements, giving everything else here at the defaults. You can get fancier on this if you want to and pull some little tricks over there in your settings and make even better selection, but I'm not going to be worrying about that right now. We just want something fast. Just little short movements like this and paint right around the edge. And then over here where the 
There's some background showing through the hair. Let's just pull into that area. And there we are. Good enough. Okay, now you want this output to selection as your top option. Choose OK. There's your selection. Move back up here to your blurred layer. Click on the layer mask. Make sure you see that light blue outline over there. On the layer mask, we have our foreground set up black. Go up to the paint, or paintbrush right here. And then just have a nice size 79 is what I have right now. And just paint right over that. And what we're doing is we are painting black right onto that layer. Now I have my opacity on. Put your opacity all the way to 100. That should do it. There we go. So just painting black onto that layer mask, and that's hiding that blurred bit. There we go. Just like that. And then go back and just kind of very carefully fill in the center, make sure it's all good and solid. And you can tell if you look over here, that looks solid to me. And then deselect. And there you go. It's that fast and that easy. Now, if you want, you can do a little more detail up here around the hair. We can bring that in a little bit better. I'm just going to zoom in a bit on the hair up here. Actually, it looks pretty good, but sometimes it'll come in just a little bit too soft, possibly, in there. And you can fix that by going back here to your brush. Bring the brush size down just a little bit. Bring the opacity down a little bit. And you can come in here and actually come around just around the edge just a little bit to help get those outer edges. There we go. Now, if you go too far on this, then you can do the opposite. Change your color to white and then paint back in white on the other side. Okay, that looks good. Let's now set this back to fit on screen. Last problem is that's blurry over here and it shouldn't be blurry in here. That's easy to fix. The exact same trick. Let's go over here to our paintbrush. I'll go for a larger brush size. That's too big. Need about, about 200 possibly in here somewhere, 205. That's a good size brush. And I have my opacity set real high first. I'll start off with real high. And I'll do this part in here where the brown is. I'll just do this with the full opacity brush. That should be nice and sharp. Bring your brush down to about 20. And come in here and just do just a little bit right down in there. That just kind of fades that out. And there we go. Now, I spent a total amount of five minutes here doing this, and that was with all of my talking and demonstrating. You can actually do this technique in under a minute once you're used to the system. It's very, very fast, as you can see, and does a real nice job. So there we go. There's before. And here's our nice controlled blurred background. There you go. If you want to bring a little bit more sharpness back into this, that's easy to do. Let's go back up here to this layer, go to the left-hand side, and put your opacity down a little bit. And the more you pull it down, the more sharpness you get back in that background. It's right there. Add in some sharpness and take out some sharpness. So it's really controllable as well. So there you go. A real fast technique to do a nice softened short depth of focus effect on a photograph. There it is without and there it is with. Don't forget to hit those like, share, and subscribe buttons. And also take a look at my complete training course. And again, that's right down there in the description. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.